go, go, go shouty, it's your birthday, we gon' party like, it's your birthday. That's actually, that's a very good competition for our Uzbekistan startup people. Hey, <laughs> we're actually coming. Wake up. Yes. No, we're actually we waking alive. up. Or at least in the Europe. Definitely. Right? Definitely. Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley in Sergeli. Yes, that is what we are actually expecting. Uh, coming up to the Murat business, I think, uh, in the current days, uh, I think more than 50% of the uh, capital, of the population of Tashkent, are aware of this business now. <laughs> yes, definitely. About one fit. Yes, uh, yeah. yes, that's a, that's a very um, nice, the, nice business. So uh, what are the aims of your department at PGP University? Like Messi, like Ronaldo, like, let's say, what, like Habib Nurmagomedov, because you're a champion, because you are the best. I think this department that you have built, that you are leading right at the university, are working to wake up these students and to start the Definitely. startups yes, like yes. better than this. Warm greetings from PGP University, dear ladies and gentlemen. Khoja Muhammad Nusradov is with you. In the upcoming seconds, we're going to start the podcast with Abujan Ahmedov, who is head of talent development department at PGP University. Abujan Ahmedov, welcome to our today's podcast. Thank you. Um, thanks for not ignoring us and coming here. Could you please briefly introduce yourself to the audience? Um, first of all, I would like to thank you for this amazing opportunity, for giving me this chance to, to have my own say like on some certain topics, specifically on education and specifically on those terms, like um, um, areas and topics that we can actually bring some benefits to the people, um, to to, peop, to the people, who, to those people who are actually seeking education. Um, personally speaking about myself, I can I can say some specific parts um, in a way that I I'm actually I've been into education for about mo- more than 23 years, and I've been in the education areas such as like the business, IT, and specifically like like learning habits, learning skills, as well as like English for some specific purposes. Um, During the the course of my experience and being involved in the education segment, um, I've met lots of individuals and lots of cases and where they will actually um, mostly um, the success stories as well as like the, the stories of failure and all those stories have actually formed some certain, um, let's say, form and shapes of, how can I say, like the inner world of education that was actually motivating me and pushing me more into this world and like giving people what actually can um, bring them more benefits in in terms of like changing themselves and and becoming different individuals. And and among them, like I would say that um, teaching business, teaching business in IT as well as uh, teaching them um, some self-development skills like how to study properly, how to motivate themselves properly, and how not to like to procrastinate the things on um, and do the things on time, most likely in time, and making sure that everything is done on time. So all these skills all together have actually affected lots of individuals during the course of my um, teaching career. And I believe that um, this is the this is the area that I would like to be more and more involved and um, bring even more joy and happiness, and of course, um, some expertise in some certain areas of of skills that people are actually going to be seeking um, to to gain and to improve and to um, to be better. Um, as far as I know, uh, you've been, till these recent days, you've been working at the university as a BPM tutor, BPM uh, teacher. Uh, it's business process modeling tools. And uh, in these recent days, uh, you have opened the new department at the university named Talent Development Department. And how do you think it is important on the student uh, building such a dedicated department focused on self-development, critical thinking, and uh, enhancing their soft skills? So first of all, we would like to um, mention the most important um, part of, of, let's say, 
skills that a lot of people actually um, choose to ignore, choose not to see, choose not to be involved with. So I would call that thing as a. Um, but we we know that uh, we know that uh, IQ skills, like let's say, they used to be very much important for for an um, for a large amount of time, like previously in the past. And but as the world changes and people as well as is changing themselves, the way that they look at the things, that the way that they accept and perceive things around. I believe that, um, well, most likely a lot of people actually have the same view in the world that the emotional, um, this uh, caution, well, which is the EQ skills, which is, which is going to actually, which are going to help, uh, help people um, build bridges between themselves in terms of communication and the other things. And I believe that the, these skills, as well as the skills like how to learn new things, how to adapt to the new reality, how to see this quickly changing world and and see the things and and take take into consideration of the uh, of of all those new uh, um, innovations upcoming and uh, like you know catching up with them all together and i believe that, that this is not only about like you know becoming an engineer it's all about like you know adapting quickly to to the new new reality of the world and and i believe that, that this new talent development um, department is going to actually bring that bring that value, bring those, let's say, opportunities to those students who believe that, um, okay, IT University is all about like learning how to code, but it's not about only like a coding, but it's, it's going to change the way that you perceive the things around yourself, the, the way that how you learn and, 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 and get new things, new knowledge, new ways of, of let's say, um, areas that you would like to open um, in in IT world and, and and the other sections of of let's say different kinds of like professions and um, um, career. So I believe that this um, this kind of approach is very important for every single university, not only in Uzbekistan but in the world. But and I believe that the, there are lots of um, activities and the things are taking place in different parts of the world at different um, universities um, in terms of like let's say motivating their students and encouraging them to learn better to learn more to do um, to do the things that they didn't do before and and in this way students are going to change a lot and I believe that the PDP University is moving towards to that section as well being like let's say becoming pioneers of this like self-development education as well um you know among students so uh, as you have mentioned now uh, the about the international um skills that uh, students are educated in the international universities so uh, what are the aims of your department at pgp university and uh, what are the benefits for students and uh, for their academic journey so first of all i would like to tell you that this this um once you are let's say once there is a university student is coming up and then he he sees only one specific thing i'm here to learn something new and what he expects that, that this is a this is a place this is a this is an organization where teachers usually give boring tasks and homework and i'm going to have to learn them and i'm going to have to get good grades and then my my diploma is going to come afterwards i'm going to get my profession that's it this is what they are expecting actually from universities which is actually exceptionally wrong thing for students to to do and for universities to provide universities and students actually should work together to what first of all like let's say um, exchanging like let's say different kinds of expertise and experience and skills as well as training and sessions and, um, and and workshops and seminars for those students who exceptionally need these kind of like let's say interpersonal skills extracurricular activities that are going to lead them like let's say to gain some experience that they have never expected before. Um, one um, very bright example I can give you is that, the, for example, let's say we got some, for example, let's say student organizations that they, that they can actually organize and conduct some events, some, let's say, some parties, some projects, some tournaments, and those tournaments actually are going to bring them like um, a lot of good values in terms of what? In terms of organizational skills, in terms of like, let's say, negotiating skills, as because they are going to have to go and negotiate with different um, kinds of sponsors, and they're going to have to bring some, some important things 
to the um, organizational parts of of these like events and, and clubs. And talent development department is actually going to be taking part in all those roles and as well as like conducting some important seminars, workshops, as well as like, let's say activities there, which are going to be pretty much interactive. And yes, there are no homework um, tasks individuals are going to be taking and having like going through the like boring stuff. Why is it important? Because first of all, they're going to have to understand that, that they are individuals. They are independent um, human beings and they will have to make decisions in terms of whether they, they should be reading books, they should be improving their um, interpersonal skills or not. And the, the, the primi- primary goal of, of this department is to show them the importance and the, the real, let's say, sweet part and the good sides of, of this thing that, that they will have to just like go through these skills. And once they go through these skills, they're going to learn more than they just, they just anticipated at the beginning of the year, um, let's say, um, steps at this university. So that's the primary goal of, of this department. So uh, there is a base question uh, by looking from the uh, student perspectives. What I will get on my hand by attending these tournaments, these activities, and these uh, seminars that uh, Talent Development Department uh, organized. So, um, I mean, what, what are the skills that they are going to have after attending these kind of seminars and lectures? Um, let's uh, now count them one by one and then describe them. So, definitely, definitely. Um, actually... You as a student, you can come up to this university and your primary goal is to is to study, is to learn coding and so on and so on. But by implementing these activities and workshops, we're gonna focus we're gonna be focusing on students actually like for example time management skills, leadership skills, and how to negotiate, how to um, allocate, you know, let's say your like let's say resources, your let's say um, opportunities, your skills properly, how to get the things properly, and what is the best ways of, of like the getting the information, and how to um, focus on let's say all those things and the, the the materials given by lecturers, and in order to make sure that this thing is gonna is gonna work, actually we will be just focusing on several areas. Um, first of all, I would say that the, we will be just inviting a lot of very much successful individuals, um, specifically in Uzbekistan and in Central Asia as well. So the, those guest guest speakers are going to come one by one, and and specifically they will be just giving the lectures um, of of their what of their journey of the, of those specific skills that they are designed to to introduce to speak about and those skills are actually going to bring some some values to these students and and it's going to let's say trigger the interest in those people in those students who are going to be listening to these lectures and then uh, they will push them to what to to do more um, um, things to improve those specific skills such as like leadership um, let's say time management um, let's say personal finance and so on and, and so on and and the second thing that we are actually focusing on this thing that we're going to be just giving out distributing students with different independent um, uh, let's say activities and projects and tournaments um, such as like let's say it can be like the, the hackathons it can be like different kinds of entertaining um, tournaments as well as study trips what, what, that we are planning to take our students to some specific like let's say business organizations companies and um, and different kinds of um, let's say uh, entities that can actually welcome students and they can share um, um, their work experience so that students can go and they can take part in those sessions and they can ask the, the questions that they are um, that they are very much interested in as well as like seeing the real working process uh, on hand like you know like having all those like let's say amazing moments all together with the, with their instructors um, the third and the last one is actually gonna be a part of this um, 
environment at the university that students are going to be actually like let's say focusing on improving their interpersonal skills such as like let's say every single student is going to have like his own role someone is going to be a boss someone is going to be a cashier someone is going to be let's say um, CFO chief financial officer CTO chief technical officer um, COO chief operating officer so all those students are going to be just like, let's say, starting their own companies, starting their own organizations, starting their own tournaments, um, events, and projects. And, and, and I believe that um, students um, in year one, two, like coming very much close to year three, conducting such things, taking part in such um, opportunities, those things are going to make them change a lot. And, and the experience that they're going to get from this university um, like is going to remain for many years to come. And they, they will always like remember the moments that they spent in PDP University as the moment that um, actually I actually learned it more than just I anticipated. I expect it to come, like let's say, um, at, uh, you know, once I first came to university. So those three things are actually like a major goals that this department is actually setting and is seeking to achieve. So the courses are focused on, first of all, personnel development and uh, business and management. And, uh, and of course, like including like this, this business in IT, like because you're going to be starting some companies and some um, um, having like, let's say, some moments like uh, with investors. So you've got your own company and you're going to have to now pitch this company. You're going to have to show the, the, the real value of your company that you are actually... Uh, present in front of other people. And do these courses include such um, course books or such material, international materials, or uh, you're gonna make, you're gonna prepare the materials yourself? I mean, about syllabus, learning aims, and as you mentioned it, uh, all this stuff is out of the curriculum, right? Yes, definitely. And uh, how do you design these courses? How do you design these materials to um, provide these students? That's a very interesting question. Um, I would like to tell you that, first of all, students will have to get their freedom. They're not going to like, get, get a course book that they're going to have to go through. But they are going to have projects. And you got now, you got your own tasks. You got your own, let's say, journey. And that's the destination. That's the result that you're going to have to prove at the end. However you do that, that is, that's, that's all up to you. And students are going to be like facing this pressure. They're going to having uh, they're going to have all those case studies and different kinds of um, specific tasks and assignments, which are not going to be just in terms of like homework. But that's going to be let's just um, suppose that you are a student. You're going to have a business project, and you will have to just make sure that this business project is actually um, a very um, profitable, a very nice, and pretty much well organized and in order to make sure that this thing is going to happen is going to take place you will have to improve your organizational skills you will have to improve your personal finance skills and you will have this need inside this urge that you're going to have to learn this you're going to have to improve this thing and our i mean department's mentors um are going to just like you know based on peer-to-peer -peer activities they're going to be conducting different kinds of workshops and they will be giving like their um, different sorts of um, consulting services. Absolutely, let's say, like um, uh, being a part of this program, like this development program. And this way, students are going to be just like learning a lot of things on hand. So they're not going to get like, let's say, like difficult textbooks that they're going to have to read. No, you are going to get tasks, you're going to get projects, you're going to get businesses that you will have to build. If you do not build, you're not successful. And they're going to be building by what? By gaining experience in the meanwhile of what? Of that journey that they're going to be like, what? They're going to be taking from the beginning. So, you know, uh, imagining myself as uh, sitting at the university that located in the uh, United States of America, or at least in the Europe. Definitely, right? definitely. Um, Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley <laughs> in yeah. Sergeli. Yes, that is what we are actually expecting. So, uh, exam-free, assessment-free courses, and uh, all the uh, tasks are like PBL, right? 
uh, project based yes. learning yes and they do different projects while mm -hmm. they while they are learning practical uh, we can say this is a uh, practical learning right definitely um mm -hmm. and uh you don't provide any final exams final assessments and fails i wouldn't say final exams i wouldn't say final assessments but there are going to be some like required like let's say expectations of the test that you're going to have to do at the at the end there will be deadlines there will be some certain things that you will have to do and students otherwise will, otherwise they will have to be just like let's say um, facing some let's say like penalty and the disciplines that they that they haven't met some certain like let's say criteria but all the students are actually expected to do this thing on hand because you know they're not going to be going home and reading the things by themselves but they're going to be facing those let's say needs by themselves while we're just conducting these um, events and projects um, let's say at the same time so while they just go through these um, events and activities that they're uh, that are given to them like in, in advance they will be just watching for example all these guest speakers coming and uh, teaching them some certain skills and at the same time um, they are going to continue this journey this specific like let's say skill um, area they're going to continue with the workshops and those workshops are going to be uh, are going to be what like um, adding up some certain um, case studies, some tasks and assignment that students are just going to take and enjoy and actually what? Learn those, I mean, gain those skills, um, what, at the same time, like, let's say, as they go through. So that's not going to be something that you will, you will have to just go to the library and, and, and do some research. No, they will just see that these are their responsibilities that they, if they actually want to learn, they can do it, like, let's say, during the class, but if they would like to get even more, then they will have all the opportunities and materials and online and offline things already like done and giving them, and they can just actually increase their skills even more. So that's not going to be something that um, if they just um, come up to this like I guess lectures and they're going to what take part in those workshops and that's it. No, those things taking part like uh, let's say in those sessions. It's already going to give them that minimum required basic, let's say, business and interpersonal skills that they're going to get. And they're, they're not going to be exams. But if they would like to get like, even more, they're going to they're be just like, let's say, um, provided with some certain, let's say, additional materials that they can actually upgrade their own skills. So thanks a lot for your understandable answer. Um, if these courses doesn't include a syllabus, uh, how can you plan the materials, the content? You work, uh, as far as I think, you work with table of content and uh, you go through this step by step with uh, very much successful people, in, the, in Uzba especially in Uzbekistan, uh, and they deliver the materials, the content that you have planned, that students need yeah, in, you, in, in the proper time. Definitely, yes, you are actually right. I mean, there should be like the, there is a, there is a plan, there is a plan of study, and that plan of study actually includes the, the, the let's say, the list of all those specific skills that students are pretty much in need. Um, but I wouldn't say that, that this is just a, like a part of this, like a university syllabus, because as I said again, there shouldn't be something like that, that, that is putting the pressure on students. It is, it is very important. Students will have to what? Will have to make decisions by themselves. We're actually coming to a new world, new era of youth, I mean, young generation, who actually believe that they are champions. That they, are, they believe that they are actually champions of their own time, of their lives. And that's why the, the approach should be a little bit different in terms of like choosing the, um, choosing the, the, the methods and the, uh, the, ways, uh, the ways how we deliver those skills to students. And from that perspective, we actually opted for the part that we are going to be actually having the, the list of skills and uh, things that we're going to provide students with. I mean, s certain, like, let's say some certain trainings and seminars. Let's a little bit uh, clarify these steps. For example, first, um, first you start with uh, psychologically nurturing, nurturing, and then the negotiation skills, and then the some more academic skills, and then 
in the next step i mean yeah definitely see like you know like there are several steps so it looks like a like stairs that students are just going up um going at the end of the stairs they are going to have the final um destination where they're going to become like let's say perfect individuals to some extent um in terms of like extracurricular activities as well as like personal professional skills so actually they all constitute some certain skills like every step belongs to a, um, a certain skill of which successful guest speakers are going to be invited they will be coming to this university and they will be just giving some different, um, certain lectures on those certain skills and students after getting those skills they will have practical workshops and seminars where they will be just playing games they will be doing some activities and they will be doing some projects and they will be just like let's say demonstrating how they actually acquired those skills successfully so based on this thing all the instructors as well as let's say mentors who are going to be like to, um conducting peer to peer activities in those workshops they will be just following um with the state of every single student like nurturing them with some specific skills and designing every single course in a way that students are going to be enjoying but not like seeing this as a as a class so i can just like give you one example that let's say a class with like 20 students having a workshop in which like they 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 can be just divided into five maybe six different um let's say teams where they will have some specific tasks some specific let's say um companies or organizations or let's say projects that they will have to just let's say um complete and in the meantime they will be just like dividing themselves into different roles and all these things and elements are just going to give them the sense that th- this is not just a university but just is just like you know it's a journey that will take them to some some unexpected amazing and 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 perfect experience and skills that they ha- that they haven't expected before coming to 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 this university yeah, you say this, this is the start of your career right <laughs> definitely yes um could you please share some real life examples or success stories that students have benefited from the courses focused on self development in their um, future life after uh, after graduation uh, of the university well I, i can give you a lot of very nice examples but um, the most recent ones that i can tell you that, that there are two of them um one of them is actually um morat uh, another one is askar um morat w- uh, was actually the student like you know we who we used to actually um um take classes together and this student has always been exceptional actually just imagine that there is a guy who's coming up to you and he's speaking to you and he's making you feel like a what like messi like ronaldo like let's say what like habib nurmagomedov because you're a champion because you are the best and those exceptional skills i believe that actually have made this guy to be very successful and and he's one of the co-founders of of one fit app that you know Uzbekistan um has recently like let's say seen and um, they actually came from Uzbekistan uh, from Kazakhstan and they're actually taking part um i mean conducting their uh, businesses in Kazakhstan and many other countries as well as like let's say racking up to more than 1 million um dollars of revenue every month uh and i can give you another example of a very perfect individual but with no interpersonal skills and his name is Askar Ajan he was also like you know a friend of mine and i saw this guy like you know growing up in my eyes like in terms of like let's say becoming a, a perfect individual and this guy actually um has been um a champion in many like let's say um information tech um um technology i mean it olympiads in the world and he he was actually in, um invited to to work in google company but the problem with this guy was that uh, every time when he was communicating with people um he was actually um a bit arrogant and he was actually pushing himself all the time yes he had exceptionally amazing talents and skills he was really good but he actually ended up like let's say leaving google at the end after like let's say um several years of working experience there but um on the other hand this murat has become a co-founder and with this little startup like which was a very tiny little thing 
he has um, managed to grow this thing to what? To a, a, a very nice level of, like, a startup. Now they are just actually seeking lots of investors, and they're, those investors are coming, actually, they're negotiating, they're pitching lot, um, in, in lots of places. And I believe that these people are actually, um, they have made a fantastic contribution uh, contributions to their, to their startup companies in terms of what? First of all, interpersonal skills. So we believe this is not only about just like coding. This is not only about being perfect coder, but also what? Being a very nice person in terms of like what? Being super lit less toxic in terms of like communicating with people. Yeah, coming up to the Murat's business, I think, uh, in the current days, uh, I think more than 50% of the uh, capital, of the population of Tashkent are aware of this business now. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, about one fit. Yes, uh, yeah. yes, that's a, that's a very uh, nice, the, nice business. One of the successful projects, uh, not only in, ta in Uzbekistan, maybe in Central Asia, in Asia. I think they, uh, start, they have started already to uh, enter the market, a global market in Europe also? Yes, yes. That's actually, that's a very good competition for our Uzbekistan startup people. Hey, yeah. <laughs> we're actually coming. Wake up. Yes. No, we're actually <laughs> waking up. Because, you know, we can see lots of amazing changes and, let's say, um, advancements in many parts of, like let's say, IT segment in Uzbekistan. I think this department that you have built, that you are leading right at the university, uh, are working to wake up these students and to start the Definitely. startups. Yes, like yes. better than this. We're just trying to become like let's say one of the the first milestones of this um, amazing journey. That students are not going to be just like sitting here studying and waiting until they graduate like the, the fourth year. No, they're just going to become like let's say um, um, entrepreneurs. Uh, perfect developers, perfect engineers, as well as like having um, super nice interpersonal skills. Yeah, with the real practices. Exactly, on hand, on hand. That's what we are actually expecting. So that this university is going to deliver lots of professionals and very nice entrepreneurs and individuals who are going to make lots of changes. And yep, we are going to expand into other markets of Central Asia as well as the world. Um, so thinking as a student, uh, I may face some uh, barriers to balance the um, academic studies and this uh, extracurricular activities and lectures, I mean, uh, seminars. Um, how can, how could students uh, manage these two different, uh, because they, 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 ha they have started the university studies to um, learn the academic Uh, modules and to learn the to learn more 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 hard skills. University courses are focused on to give to provide the hard skills to the students, and the talent development courses are focused on more soft skills. And uh, how yeah, what is the key to balance these two different um, sides of um, how to say of success? I can say right. Well, we would say that the, first of all, okay. Um, in terms of hard skills, students are going to get them because it's a university. Yeah, it's a nice opportunity. Of course, it's going to make them perfect and super nice and professionals, good professionals. But on the other hand, the, the, this TDD, Talent Development Department, is going to provide them with lots of opportunities in terms of what? Like playing games, going through lots of interesting events and activities, And what, at the same time, improving their interpersonal skills. They're going to learn what? How to talk, how to negotiate, how to, um, let's say, do some certain things. Like, let's say, maybe it can be like etiquette. Maybe it can be like some, let's say, code of conduct. Like, let's say they're going to some certain companies and they can have perfect IT skills. But during the interview, they can ask some certain, let's say, um, personal questions like you know how would you um, handle this difficult situation like let's say stressful moment yes and in that thing um, 
it's their obligation, it's their responsibility, what, to focus on the way of what, like, you know, showing themselves, demonstrating that, that they are actually capable of what, being a very nice part of the team, but not toxic person, right? That's what we are going to teach, actually, our students to excel. So, uh, one of my last questions is, and how can you give, how could you give these courses, like, Uh, building new projects, building startups, and about business interests to the students who came up to the university to study and uh, to learn how to code, to learn how to be um, uh, how to say how to be a specialist in IT industry, and then you are giving the um, business uh, skills and you are providing the uh, startup uh, models and startup managing the startup how can they manage the startup when they don't have any startups even when they don't know themselves how to work in the industry in the company yeah that's actually a very good question and i'm sure that the most of our viewers and let's say audience they actually wanted to ask the same thing and yeah, I, it is. i believe that you know in the comment section we're going to be seeing the, all these messages as well i would say that um, from 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 that perspective the best example would be um let's say learning coding skills So while we, while a student is trying to learn how to code, he's not going to just wait until he masters all those, like let's say scripts and syntaxes at, until the end, and then he's going to start projects. No, he's going to learn one little part, one little block, and he's going to what? He's going to learn it, and he's going to start coding it, and he's going to see this thing if it's working or not, and then he understands this part. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the next block. And the next block. So he's going to be learning by doing the things. And that's the same thing in business. Businesses is not all about like, let's say, just learning all the skills about like how to do the business, how to do the startup, and then start doing this. Yes? No. You first start it and learn it at, at the, what? At the same time. In the meantime of what? Of the development of the, those projects, of those companies. That's why these individuals who are actually just students who are pretty much immature to do something serious, actually they're going to be going through these serious, um, let's say, tasks and assignments of what? Of starting your own company. Just imagine that the Abdijabbar, who is only like 18 years old, he's starting a business. He's going to come up to his house and he's going to say, what? Daddy, mommy, I got my own company now. And his mom and dad, they're going to say, what? Hey, just listen, wait a second. We're not going to be investing any money. We're not going to sell our car. You just need to go on with that. Come on. I mean, you just need to stop and start studying. And he's going to say, that business is actually a part of my studies at university. Yes, you are right. You heard it right. Because what? Because I am gaining hard skills at the same time with my soft skills. And in my soft skills, they're actually teaching me how to do the business. So by the end of this university, I mean, the, by, by, by the time that I graduate my university, at least I'm going to get the experience of starting a business. At least I'm going to get the experience of being a part of a project, a part of a team, so we can work together. It's not just the university just sitting down behind the table, listening to your lectures, assignment is coming, doing it, getting your grades, done. No. Now you're going to do something real, realistic things. And if there are some students with the fire, with the, let's say, with the proper motivation and like the proper directions, those students can actually become successful. Yeah. And how do you manage every single student's work, every single student's business, uh, whether they are on the right way or on the wrong way? They're going to be doing or this they are teams. facing the, yeah. um, let's say, bankrupts or... Uh, fails as life has got its own ups and downs you think are they ready to this to face this ups and downs and uh, doesn't it lead to demotivate them from these studies no definitely because what Why? first because first of all um, see like um, well actually your concern is actually yes reasonable i believe so But you just need to understand one thing that they're not going to be just doing these project by themselves of course they're going to be doing them in teams and and for example let's say um five six seven people are going to be doing for example some specific projects some specific um they will be dealing with some specific companies and yes their parents are not going to be investing any money 
Yes, they're not going to invest any money in this thing, but the concept of, let's say, running a business, running an organization, like let's say uh, some projects and like managing teams, these actually things are going to bring them a lot of like, let's say values in terms of what, in terms of like improving their uh, um, interpersonal skills as well as self-development skills. And they will, what they will, they will become perfect individuals in terms of personal and professional experience. So that's what we are actually aiming for. Thanks a lot. Huge thanks for your sincere answers in terms of this uh, self-development questions. And um, now in the final part of the podcast, could you please uh, give some advice um, for applicants of the university and what, what, what they need to learn uh, before coming up to the university, before studying the, their academic studies at the university in terms of this um, self-development, personal development skills, what they need to learn and uh, what they, how, how can they prepare to start these courses at the university? I would like to tell them that they have to be, first of all, free. They have to just, like, let's say, make proper decisions that they are going to change their life a lot, that they're going to change their, let's say, not only like in terms of like the hard skills, but as well as like soft skills. And they will be just coming and gaining all these experience. And beginning from the year two, year three, they will become totally 100% different individuals. Thinking about the applicants, not only the students of PGP University or the students who have already started their academic Uh, journey at the bachelors uh, maybe for applicants because uh, some of them may not understand what is the soft skills and hard skills um, let's uh, describing them definitely yes uh, hard skills as we know that they are the skills that the universities will have to give them and they will have to get from the universities right like they will learn such as like let's say courses economics information technology python and many other skills But soft skills. Skills that they can uh, get from the books. From books, and, from lectures uh, yeah. and courses, right? But what about soft skills? Soft skills, first of all, there are the skills that nobody can, can touch. That's why this is a, they, they are actually called as soft. Um, you cannot touch them in terms of like what? Like you cannot just produce something um, with them. Like it, there is no product. But the only thing that you can produce is what? Is a value human value that you are going to give to other people that people are going to be um, appreciating the way that you are talking to them communicating with them and the way that how you deal with yourself first of all inside of yourself and this is what they are going to improve in these um, sessions and workshops as well um, during the their journey to this amazing world Thanks a lot for your attention, dear applicants and dear viewers of this podcast. And wait us for the next podcasts. And thanks a lot. For, Thank you so much. Thank you for yeah, this opportunity. For your visit and for yes. your time. And I would like to wish you guys good, good luck. Good luck. And see you in guys your soon. Studies. And Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we wish you the best luck in your future studies and future career. Bye for now.